the foramina of the skull are all the openings. Uh, we're grouping here together to learn as a unit. So we have our first largest opening here is the nares, the external nares. Um, and I'll be using bones of the skull to help locate or to help locate and define some of these. So it's good to be very familiar with the bones of the skull um, as you go about your learning process. We have up in the front corner of the eye, a little hole, the nasolacrimal canal. In some animals, you'll have a couple of holes in that, in that area, but they're going through the lacrimal bone, so nasolacrimal canal. Underneath the eye is a fairly substantial opening here. Uh, that is the infraorbital, the, the passageway through the bone itself, you'll hear the infraorbital canal. The foramen is the opening itself, the, the rounded opening foramen. And then the canal is this, like think about it as the tube through the bone, as the infraorbital infra canal below the eye, infraorbital. There's a lot of variation um, in where the maxillary foramen expresses. So we have just on the inside here of that infraorbital canal on the medial side, sometimes it'll be more posterior to it, um, is the maxillary foramen. And that goes through and helps supply the teeth with nerve and blood. At the bottom front side of the orbit, we have the sphenopalatine foramen, which is high, like usually usually larger in a cat and always um, superior to or above. There we go. And then the posterior palatine foramen is this little dude, and it also exits here. So you can see the posterior palatine foramen in between the palatine process of the maxilla and the palatine process of the palatine. So posterior palatine foramen right here. We have the incisive foramina, um, or sometimes they are, they are labeled the anterior palatine foramina. So posterior palatine foramen, anterior palatine foramen. Foramina is plural of foramen. Kind of in the center of the orbit, there's a little hole, the ethmoid foramen. There we go. So the ethmoid foramen is a little tiny hole and remember, the ethmoid bone is within this internal structure. Back here, there is a sequence of four foramina. Five in a fox, but or in, in canines, but we'll talk about that in a second. So, one, two, three, four. They all have something to do with O's or R's, so it can be easy to get those kind of mixed up. I always like to keep them in sequence when I'm learning them, so think about it from front of the skull to the back of the skull and name them consistently from the front to the back so you have that pattern in your head. So optic foramen, this is where the optic nerve comes out for the eyeball. Optic foramen, orbital fissure, and again this is possibly more stretched out in some animals than in others and this is the fissure between the, or the suture runs through here between the allosphenoid and presphenoid. Orbital fissure, Foramen rotundum, foramen oval. Once again, that sequence of four, optic foramen, orbital fissure, foramen rotundum, foramen oval, O-O-F-F. -F. If we turn the skull upside down um, and use your tympanic bulla as, as kind of a landmark, at the front of the tympanic bulla, is this passageway here, the Eustachian Canal. This passageway through. This large hole on the side of the skull, that's your external auditory meatus. And if you look inside, you see an additional couple of holes. Those are your fenestra vestibuli anteriorly and fenestra cochleae posteriorly. You are not responsible for learning those for this exam. Posterior to your external auditory meatus is your mastoid foramen. There's a little doodad right here next to your mastoid process. So kind of pair those together. And on the bottom of your skull, underneath or posterior to your tympanic bulla, 
the jugular foramen here. And then last but not least, the foramen magnum. This is where the spinal cord exits the brain. Big old, big old thing. The post-orbital processes may be more or less pronounced. And in the fox, they're pretty little. Post-orbital processes. Uh, just to reiterate, the zygomatic arch is comprised of those two bones, the jugal and the zygomatic process of the temporal. Along the top back side of the head is the sagittal crest, dividing the skull along the sagittal plane, so cutting them in from right to left, sagittal crest. And in the fox, we have sagittal crest here. And that's for muscle attachment, for chewing muscles uh, that will... So this, this can be really large in animals that have a lot of bite power. The nuchal line or ridge or crest is uh, running along the backside for neck muscle attachment. The nuchal line, nuchal ridge, nuchal crest, any of those are acceptable. We have some little projections. Uh, so processes are projections of bone. Um, so we have behind the mastoid foramen, we have the mastoid process. And on the back edge of the tympanic bulla, you'll feel a little hook um, on the cat, and it's much more pronounced in the fox. We have our paracondylar process. Para being around condylar, condyles process. I know the fox, they're enormous. Paracondylar process. And the condyles themselves are what attach the head to the atlas, the first vertebra of the spine. So they are smooth, articular places. Um, any place where bones articulate together is generally very smooth to allow for better movement. And on the fox, occipital condyles, on either side of that foramen magnum. Just to reiterate the sutures, we have the coronal suture between the frontal and the parietal. We have the palatine suture between the palatine process of the maxilla and palatine process of the palatine. We did talk about the hamulus when we were talking about the pterygoid bone. The hamulus is the little hook. Uh, so it is not a bone itself, it is just the hook off of the pterygoid bone or process. Lastly, we have the mandibular fossa, which is a smooth, kind of rounded excavation here on the bottom posterior edge of that zygomatic arch. This is where the mandible attaches, the coronoid process of the mandible attaches here. And they have to be smooth for that smooth jaw movement. And the little projection on the posterior edge is the retroarticular process. 